Such a pleasure to be back with you this week. Um, I felt this in the first service, and I feel it again now, but as we um, are celebrating Mother's Day today, I know that this is a day that is um, uh, quite a painful day for a lot of people. Mothers who have lost a child, mothers who've had a miscarriage, women who long to be mothers, and that's not happened for them yet, um, women who have lost their own mother. And I just really felt it was on the Lord's heart to say that he... He is with you, and that he is with you today, and that he is with you in the mourning and the grieving process of your journey. And I just wanted to take a moment to pray for you. I'm not going to make you stand up or do anything like that, but if, 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 if that's you, you are on the Lord's heart this morning. And so, Father, we just uh, thank you for your incredible love. Father, I thank you that your love finds us. Father, that your love picks up the pieces of our hearts when we have no idea how to do that ourselves. And Father, that you, your word says that you are the God of all comfort. And I invite you now to reveal yourself as the God of all comfort to every woman in here who is mourning, grieving, processing, walking that journey, wrestling around with, with, with hopes that have been unfulfilled or dashed. Father, I thank you that you walk with us and weep with us in this journey. Would your healing love come and find each one this morning? In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, last week I had the real privilege of talking on stillness and on cultivating a deep inner life with God. I've had lots of feedback from people who were like, yes, I tried it and it was kind of amazing, but it sort of worked. Like deep God, the, the stuff bubbled in, out in my heart and God spoke to me and I wept and I I felt connected and deep peace came. So I want to encourage you, if you didn't have opportunity to try it last week, there's still time. There's still time for you. And if you did try it, keep doing it, my friends. Keep cultivating that deep inner life with God. Um, my apologies. I, re I recommended a book last week, and I was so enthusiastic about it. I've read that book so many times from cover to cover, and I actually told you the wrong name. As I got all these messages from people saying, I've been looking for it. It's actually Abba's Child by Brennan Manning, not Abba Father. Abba Father, he talks about the Abba Father prayer, which was what I was thinking about, but the book's called Abba's Child. For those of you who are deeply confused by my recommendation. This morning, I want to talk about a different area of stillness in your life, a perhaps more involuntary area of stillness, and that is your dream life. This is another area where God wants to break in and speak to you. Now, some of you are dreamers. You're like, yes, I dream. I dream many dreams. Some of you are like, Sarah, oh, my mind is already switching off before your mind switches off. I just want to just cast some vision for this morning. There are those of you who have prophetic dreams up the wazoo. You have angels and symbolic things and glory clouds and awesome, brilliant dreams like that. And I love those dreams and I value them. This morning is not about those dreams. <laughs> this morning is dreams for, this morning is about calling dreams. And this morning is about problem solving dreams. Because our God is a God who cares about the problems that we face. And the things, you know, one of the things that the Lord said this morning, if you are a project manager, this morning is for you. If you have a passion for societal reform, this morning is for you. If you want to see reform in the education system, in the justice system, in the healthcare system, in any area of society, this morning is for you. Because God gives wonderful prophetic dreams that set some of your hearts on fire, 
But some of you, your hearts are set on fire by practical downloads of like stuff that you can action. Who likes the action, like the give me the practical action stuff? Yeah. You know, do you know why you're like that? Because you're made in the image of God. And he's like that too. He wants to see practical out action coming out from the dreams and the passions he places in our hearts. This morning, I felt like God is going to be giving people in this room. He emphasized this several times when I was preparing, but some of you in this room are going to get dreams from God whilst you sleep. Dreams that will cause massive social reform. There is an anointing coming on, this, on, on these times, but on us as a church, where God is going to be giving hungry hearts the answers, the solutions, the blueprints, the passions to bring reform into areas of culture and society. And I, 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 he kept emphasizing in this room, if you're watching on the internet, grab it by faith. But in this room right now, God is going to be downloading revelation from heaven, from his heart, that can change your culture, your community, thousands upon thousands of people's lives. You know, yeah, come on. Because I'm like, I was like, Lord, who's it going to be? I'm like, let's do it. Let's grab it. Sometimes we can see dreams as this airy fairy thing over here, whereas actually there's a practical reality that God speaks in dreams. We see he did it consistently in the Bible. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He hasn't suddenly changed his method of communication. He intends for your nights to be times where he enables you to break through the paradigm of your thinking, i.e. stop being narrow-minded. He, he wants to speak to you whilst you're sleeping about problems that you face that you can't fix in your own understanding. He wants to give you ideas and passions and place a burning encounter inside of you that will give you the courage that will give you the passion to change the world. Florence Nightingale, you may or may not have heard of her. She was born in 1820 in, in the UK. She was a woman born to a wealthy family. Her, the expectations for her life would be you know, get married between 18 and 20, have lots of children, be seen and not heard, and please be quiet and, you know, make tea, serve tea or something. When she was 17 years old, she woke up from a dream in which she said she heard God call to her and, and give her a passion to lay her life down she had a call to service and a call to pursue healing and health for people. She was living at a time where, based on numerous documents of the time, nurses were usually gathered from the alcoholic, drunk street people. She's the person who brought massive social reform to healthcare. She founded modern nursing. She introduced hand washing to hospitals. And she did that at, ma at a time when women were not in, you know, encouraged to be doing that. She had massive opposition when she informed her parents that she didn't want to just go down the normal route for her life, but that she was going to pursue this. She had huge family opposition. She had social opposition. She was a woman who was bold and outspoken at a time when women were not embraced to be bold and outspoken. But she persisted and the courage and the bravery, the vision and the passion came from that call of God from a dream when she was 17 years old. 
God wants to give that sort of dream to you and to me. A dream that will light our hearts on fire, that will translate from passion to action. Passion to action. She never married. She chose to lay her life down to see incredible social reform. She was a woman on fire. And God is wanting to place that within you and me. He's wanting to release dreams from heaven that are gonna give us the fearlessness to pursue areas of reform in our, our lives, in our societies, that, that maybe we're gonna face opposition, maybe we're gonna face challenge, but the fire that God places in us is gonna burn and is gonna give us everything we need. <clears throat> in Joel 2, Acts 2, Joel 2, 28, Acts 2, 17, he says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. That I'm obviously not a man. I dream a lot. I'm not an old man. Um, I'm pregnant, you know. <laughs> what is that saying? In these days, in these last days, that's us, that's here, that's now, a fruit, a consequence of the Holy Spirit being poured out, being here, you having a relationship with Jesus, the fruit of that is gonna be that, that you are gonna move into the prophetic gifts and you are gonna have dreams from God. These dreams, yeah, come on, this is for you, this is for me, this is for each of us. This is not reserved for the special, the elite, the chosen, the prophetically all singing, all dancing ones. This is for normal people, each one of us. This is for me in my life. You know, it's been really exciting in, in the mums group I'm part of, the number of us who've had dreams where God is giving us wisdom in how to parent our children how to face um, how to, solutions to problems, warnings about stuff that might be happening, and who knows, I, we need all the help we can get in parenting. <laughs> for those in the trenches right now, you're like, oh yes, oh yes, but for the grace of God. Well, seriously. <laughs> I love that. Because I want God to give me a heads up about things I need to avoid. I mean, I shared a testimony a few years ago about how I had a dream about a plant in the garden of our house that we'd just bought. And in the dream, it was like, there was, it was a real warning. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And it had something about belladonna and poison and da 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 da. And I, it just kind of stuck with me. And I, I was like, well, I've never seen that plant before. Well, you know, lo and behold, I go out into our garden two days later, and there is that plant growing right by the tree. It's the only plant with a lovely purple flower in our yard. Well, I go and research it, and apparently, you know those berries, those little round berries that just look so appealing? They're really poisonous, really poisonous for small children. Who knows that small children try to eat everything in their path? Yes. I mean, we'd barely moved into the house and I was like, thank you, Father, for that heads up because I don't know all the plants in Canada. I didn't grow up here. I don't have an understanding, but God gave me a warning in a dream that I was able to respond to. Let's start valuing the dreams that God gives us. You know, Psalm 16, seven says, I will bless the Lord who counsels me. He gives me wisdom in the night. He tells me what to do. Who needs some counseling, some wisdom? I'm like, yes, yes, me, me. I'll take some free stuff like that. That is part of what our night season, our dream life is about. God wants to give us message dreams, wisdom dreams, dreams that break us out of the narrow boxes we can live in or reveal the blind spots. Have you ever changed lanes and nearly hit a car? 
Oh, do you know somebody in your family who's changed lanes and nearly hit a car? <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry, wrong question. Everyone's like, yes, my spouse. Oh, I mean, <laughs> that's your blind spot. We all have blind spots in our life. God will reveal blind spots to us in our dreams. Years ago, when I first started studying dreams and dream interpretation, um, I had a series of dreams where I was very angry in the dreams. Now, initially, I approached that with like, oh, maybe the people in the dreams are doing things wrong. I should go and tell them about it. Thankfully, through the process of maturity and the Holy Spirit, I realized actually God was speaking to me about my life and about the blind spot of hidden anger that was in my life. Initially, I was like, no, no, I'm not an angry person. This is not, you know. No, God will reveal blind spots in our dreams. And I'm very thankful for, for that. God will give warnings in dreams. Do you remember um, Pharaoh and Joseph? Pharaoh has the dream of the seven fat cows coming out of the Nile, then seven thin cows come out, they eat up the fat cows. That's kind of a weird dream. Then the seven, you know, thick ears of corn and then the seven skinny ones and they consume them. And that was a dream of the future. That was a dream of calamity, of massive financial ruin and death that was about to come to Egypt. Whose sphere of influence was that? That was Pharaoh's sphere of influence. Joseph brought him, A, the interpretation of the dream. You're going to have seven years of the best crops and abundance you've ever seen or heard of. And then you're going to have seven years of such a terrible famine and deprivation that it's like those, you won't even remember having food. Now, when we have dreams of the future, it's not, it's not God being like, hey, just thought you'd like a snapshot of what's to come. Good luck. <laughs> no, so we can take action. So Joseph didn't just give him the interpretation, be like, well, there you are, that's what's going to happen. Joseph pressed in for the wisdom strategy from the Lord of what to do. If you look at the dream, the wisdom strategy was not in the dream. That was the download from the Holy Spirit, from the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And the strategy was store up food so that when the famine comes, there will be enough food stored up to get you through those seven years. And that is exactly what came to pass. Dreams of the future and then strategies from heaven that are brought into action through us. Who wants those sort of dreams? Who wants those sort of strategies? You know, for those of you in influential sectors of the world, this is what God wants to give you. He's passionate about the area of business you've chosen. He loves the fact you like to code, that you're passionate about finances, that you care about public health. Each one of those things, God's put something inside of you. And he wants to partner with you to bring heaven into the area where you work, where you live, whether it's family, whether it's education, justice, health, God is interested in giving you solutions and creative ideas. Larry Page, the co-founder of Google, he had a dream with the idea of downloading the web onto his personal computer. He woke up and he spent the rest, he says, I spent the middle of the night after waking up from the dreams, scribbling down ideas and convincing myself that it could work. Who hasn't used Google in this room? That came from a dream. I see those two hands back there. The discovery of insulin came from a dream. Like it was a very, you know, it was a very clear dream. The guy who invented the sewing machine. He was 
trying, he was, he was trying to come up with ideas of how it could be possible, and he had a total stress dream about it. But at the end of the dream, there were people with spears about to kill him going up and down, and the hole for the needle was on the opposite end than you did with a hand sewing, and he was like, that's it, and he woke up, and he went and made a prototype that day. For the musicians among you, Paul McCartney. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. Wrong key, wrong key. That song, the melody of that song, he received in a dream. He's written about it in many different places, talked about it in many different places. Every part of that he got in a dream. I don't know what your sphere of influence is. I don't know what your passion is. I don't know what burns inside of you, but God wants to set that on fire and start giving you solutions. He wants to start giving you creative ideas. You know, the guy, you know, the the periodic table, the idea for the connection of that came through a dream. There are so many areas of life and society that we live in now that came from heaven downloads. And if them, why not you? Why not you? Why not us? Why not us? So as I'm preparing, and I'm just, you know, spending time with the Lord, that thought comes to me, like, so what's holding us back? And like, in, you, know, in a milli- you know when God speaks to you in like a millisecond? I'm just like, Lord, kind of just like pondering, like, what's holding us back? And immediately I hear James 4, you have not because you ask not. I was like, oh, boom. Well, there we go. We have not because we ask not. Are you asking for creative, problem-solving solutions in your dreams? Because if you haven't been, I suggest you begin. Let's start doing that. Let's start, when we go to sleep, say, Lord, I anoint myself in the name of Jesus to receive dreams from you. Speak to me. You know the problems I'm facing at work. You know the struggles I've got in my family. I need a blueprint. I need a call of God that's going to light me on fire. I need ideas for my startup. Whatever it is, start blessing yourself to receive them. Start asking our heavenly daddy for, for an outpouring from heaven. Matthew 7, 7, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Now, please don't come back in a few weeks and say, Sarah, I prayed that one night and it didn't work. I like I did it for one night. You know the whole thing about knocking on a door? You know, there's, there's sometimes a bit of repetition when you knock because you sort of knock. You, know, you, you rarely knock once. You sort of, you know, and maybe the person's asleep or maybe they're, you know, having children. I'm usually at the far end of the house, upstairs, with a, you know, child who's got a marker in their hand at the moment someone knocks on the door. So it's very rarely that I'm standing close to the door like, here I am, hoping that someone will knock on my door today. (laughs) Let's be persistent. Let's press in. Do it for several weeks. Every time you go to bed, say, Lord, I want dreams from you. I want calling dreams. I want problem-solving dreams. I want dreams that will revolutionize my culture. I'm ready. I'm waiting. I've got my journal by my bed. If you're like Ben, you've got your laptop or you've got your phone with voice memo. You know, whichever means of recording your dream, you're ready. You know, statistics show that the more you record your dreams, the more you'll remember your dreams. 
So start writing them down, even if they don't feel like the mind-blowing formula that you've been waiting for. Um, there was, I'm, I'm trying to, there's so many different stories about breakthroughs and dreams, but there was one of them where the guy had the dream, didn't write it down, and then couldn't remember it fully. It was like a, a chemical formula that he received. He spent weeks trying to recreate it and couldn't. And then a few years later, he had the same dream again, leapt up, wrote every word down, and he won a Nobel Prize for the, for the work that, that he got through his dream. If not, if him, why not you? Why not you? What, what, what are you knocking on the door for? What would you like to see? What, would, what passion do you have? What area of society do you say, oh, this needs change? Maybe God's calling you to be the change, to bring the change. And sometimes some of you are like, oh, you're switching off because you're like, well, Sarah's just speaking about some sort of airy, fairy area that isn't me. No, I'm talking about business. I'm talking about building codes. I'm talking about financial strategies. I'm talking about, you know, startup ideas. I'm talking about the nitty gritty practical stuff by which we live. God's interested in that. He cares about it. If you're passionate about it, he's passionate about it. He placed the passion in you. Well, what happens if we don't listen to those dreams? You know, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream about a tree that was bound in bronze and chopped down and was, there was a judgment spoken over it. And Daniel is like, oh, oh. You never want to hear someone say, oh, that this dream were given to your enemy. That's a bad preamble right there. <laughs> You're like, ah, me, 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 me. oh, that this dream were given to your enemy. And he's like, Nebuchadnezzar, change your ways. Repent of your sins. Start being kind to the poor and the oppressed. That the Lord would change this judgment that's spoken over you. Well, Nebuchadnezzar didn't do that. And a year to the day later, he stands there saying, look at how fabulous I am and all that I've created. And boom, everything that was spoken in the dream came upon him. There was a warning. There was an invitation in that dream. Are we going to say yes to the invitation of God's heart? What about Abraham Lincoln? A few days before he was assassinated, he had a dream. He documents it in his diary. He dreamt that he walked into the White House and there were just black sheets covering everything. And there was the sound of wailing and mourning. And he, he was trying to find the source of it. And that, you know, he walked up to a soldier and said, what has happened in the White House? Who is dead in the White House was his question. And the man replied and said, the president, he was killed by an assassin. What if he had known how to respond to dreams? What if he had known that God speaks to us today in dreams? You know, in Job 33, where it talks about God gives dreams to keep us from falling into the pit. He warns us of peril that is in our path. Has God given you a warning dream? Because I would like to have warning dreams about pits that are in my path. Think about the Titanic. Do you know there were 19 documented dreams that the boat was going to sink? Some of those people canceled their ticket and did not go on the boat. How grateful would you be that you were like, I listen to the dream. I listen to the dream. I feel really bad for those people. I listen to the dream. You'd be, you'd be feeling pretty good, wouldn't you, at that moment? We want to be people who listen to when God is speaking to us about what is to come. Yes, 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 yes. You know, um, 
Dreams can be immensely helpful and directional. 20 years ago, before I um, started working at the School of Ministry, I had a dream where Jesus came to me, described the job I was gonna move into, and gave me the keys to the School of Ministry. And at the end of the dream, I looked down, I was holding a baby and said, this is mine to look after now. I love that dream, it was so powerful, it was so helpful, encouraging. Now, last year, when I'm coming to the end of my maternity leave with my second little girl, I'm wrestling, because I love my role there. I feel like I've had a mandate from the Lord to, be, to do that. It's not just like a job, it's like this is something the Lord has given me, so therefore I'm not, just, I'm not giving it up lightly. But I have these two gorgeous girls. And that's a gift and a mandate from the Lord too. So I I was going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, trying to figure out my way through. And then I was in a worship meeting and the worship leader was like, I just feel like we need to throw our crowns down before the Lord. Now, do you want an insight into my head? I don't really like Christianese. So when people say things like that, I'm like, what does that really mean? Is it like a holy wing toss? Like, can you get your crown onto Jesus' foot? You know, those are the pictures I get when I, you know, but then I have that little moment of little smile in my head. And then I'm just like, okay, Lord, what's the reality of this? What does that picture, what does that, what does that sort of symbolic picture mean for me? What, what do I have of value that I can lay down before you. So I'm like, Lord, you know, I'm kind of smiling, like, Jesus, you know, what, I mean, I don't even finish the question. And immediately, I've not thought of that dream in a long time, immediately that dream comes to my mind and I hear Jesus saying, would you give me the keys to the school of ministry? And I was like, oh, oh, I like my keys. (laughs) But do you, But in that moment, it actually engaged an incredible peace in my heart. Because number one, I want my life to be a yes to God. So I'm gonna say yes. But number two, the Lord's releasing me from something. I I didn't really wanna give them back. I was like, well, can I keep the keys? But still, you know, do you know what I'm talking about? When you kind of, you're like still one foot in, one... But actually, as I said yes to God, it totally freed me to say, what I want to do is be at home with my girls, investing in them in this season. And to do it without feeling like I've compromised somewhere. I'm feeling, I no longer felt double-minded, I felt free. So then I came home and cried with Kathy. And, and, and was like, I need to resign. Sorry it took me this long. <laughs> But I wanna encourage you, God is wanting to speak to you about directional, creative problems, about things that you face in your life that are the nitty gritty of life and he will speak to you in your dreams. He's gonna be releasing calling dreams for social reform. He's gonna be releasing um, downloads, especially for the project managers. Who are the project managers in here? Wave a hand at me. Just, I got that word so many times when I was preparing. I'm like, we need to pray for you this morning because there's something from heaven for you. So what we're gonna do right now is if you want some of these dreams, we're gonna stand up and we're gonna pray. I realize I've not spoken about dream interpretation at all this morning. I'm actually speaking on dream interpretation in the School of Ministry this week on Thursday and Friday. If you'd like to come, come and talk to Gordon and Kathy and you can sign up for the class or email at the front desk. But if you want some of these dreams, if you have problems you face in your life, if you are saying, I want social reform, let's stand to your feet right now and we are gonna say, God, I want them. I want them. Would you give me a dream? A dream that will change society. A dream that will change my family. A dream that will fix the problems I face. I'm open. I'm willing. 
I open the ears of my heart and I say, yes, yes, yes. Whoa. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on.